You're all pretty much f Michael Douglas is a famous actor, producer, and representative of the famous acting dynasty. He's made a successful career akin to his father's Kirk Douglas and became a true Hollywood legend. We will tell you about his past to the top in this video. How Michael Douglas Lives and How Much He Earns Michael Kirk Douglas was born on September 25, 1944 in the young acting family of Kirk Douglas and Diana Dill. The boy was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey, but soon the family moved to New York. Two and a half years later, Michael had a younger brother, Joel. The family lived in a one-room apartment in the Greenwich Village area. Right now, our hero is called the heir to the show business's royal dynasty, but back then, his parents were just starting their careers. Kirk spent most of his time in California filming under a studio contract, and his marriage with Diana couldn't withstand it. Michael's parents divorced when he was six years old, and he stayed with his mother. Seven years later, she remarried. Stepfather became the first adult Michael could talk to about anything, and thanks to whom the young man felt confident for the first time. But at school, none of the teachers could restrain his violent temperament. Even though Michael studied well, he skipped classes and talked back to the teachers. For some time, the young man worked at a mobile gas station. Some days, he was an employee of the month, and other days, he would track cars and steal spare parts from them with his friends. In addition to his stepfather, the authority for Douglas Jr. was his father, who managed to become a movie icon for the whole of America. Michael was so impressed by Kirk's films and the time spent with him on the set during the summer holidays that he also wanted to become an actor. He often asked his father which doors to knock on to break into Hollywood, but he was categorically against his son's choice of profession. However, when Michael enrolled at the University of California as a dramatic arts major and played in theatrical productions, Kirk came to his son's every performance, no matter how busy he was. At university, Douglas became friends with Danny DeVito, who later became his flatmate. They rented an apartment in New York for $150 a month. At the same time, the young man earned a living by delivering coffee at the cinema and working behind the scenes. Nevertheless, Kirk contributed to the beginning of his son's acting career. Together, they starred in and produced the 1966 film Cast a Giant Shadow. The following roles came only several years later. In the late 60s, early 70s, Douglas starred in several TV series and films such as Hail Hero and Summer Tree. On the set, the young man met a young promising actress, Brenda Vaccaro. The couple was inseparable for six years, living like hippies and vowing eternal love to each other. Michael calls this time the most wonderful in his life. But the relationship ended abruptly. Brenda just got in the car and left. The young actor's first significant work was the role of an inspector in the TV series The Streets of San Francisco, which he received in 1972 and played for five years. I've got two eyewitnesses. What did they see? Police brutality. Oh, come on now. Joe Landers? Look, he may be a little hard-nosed, but he never manhandled anybody. I don't buy that. All right, did they see the gun go off? Not who was holding it, no. His partner on the set was Kirk Douglas' friend Carl Malden. He called Michael the son he never had and insisted on his participation in the project. Interestingly, even after moving to Hollywood, Michael continued to pay his part of the rent while DeVito remained in New York. Also in 1972, our hero appeared in the films When Michael Calls and Napoleon and Samantha. The latter has become a classic of American children's films. Later, Douglas was caught up with the work behind the scenes. He directed one of the episodes of Streets of San Francisco and began working on the film adaptation of Ken Kesey's novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The rights to the film adaptation belonged to Kirk, but he abandoned the hope of implementing the project, so he handed them over to his son. The film surpassed all expectations, winning five Oscars and bringing fabulous profits to the Douglas dynasty. Since then, our hero has acted as a producer in many films in which he starred. In 1977, Michael married the daughter of an Australian diplomat, Deandra Luker, and a year later, they had a son, Cameron. According to both spouses, their life together was like a volcano. It subsided for a while, then erupted with terrible force. And there were a lot of infidelities. 
Deandra said in an interview that she once caught her husband with her friend, but each time she forgave him. In 1978, the thriller The China Syndrome was released. Douglas's payout, in which amounted to $262,000. For his next film, the sports drama Running, Michael trained a lot and ran about 55 miles a week. In addition, he stopped smoking two packs of cigarettes a day and lost almost 13 pounds. Then, the movie It's My Turn came out, but a successful career had to be put on pause for several years. In 1980, Douglas was seriously injured at a ski resort and returned to the screens only in 1983 with the crime thriller The Star Chamber. It then became widely known, unlike his next work, the adventure film Romancing the Stone. Michael, who also became the producer, bought the script for $250,000, and as a result, the box office around the world exceeded $85 million. Equally successful was the sequel titled The Jewel of the Nile in 1985, although Douglas took part in the sequel without much desire. Soon, the musical A Chorus Line was released on the screens, and in 1987, the world saw two hits at once, Fatal Attraction and Wall Street. For the former, Douglas received 13 million, and for the later, two major film awards, a Golden Globe and an Oscar. In addition, the role of the stock market shark and concurrently the main villain ironically inspired many people to make a career in economics and the stock market. In 1989, Michael presented to the audience the crime thriller Black Rain and the comedy The War of the Roses. In the latter, he worked with his friend Danny DeVito. Then he produced several films including the action movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Double Impact, and starred in the military drama Shining Through. But the absolute hit of 1992 was the thriller Basic Instinct, for which Douglas received 15 million. My sex life's actually pretty shitty since I stopped seeing you. Start developing calluses. According to Michael, shooting the sex scene with Sharon Stone was torture because they had to repeat the choreography for 10 hours of the shooting day for five days in a row. In addition, the actor forbade shooting himself naked from the front. By the way, he performed almost all the car stunts on his own. The role of the detective from Basic Instinct became one of the brightest in Douglas's career. But he didn't get stuck in one role. In the next movie, Falling Down, he appeared in the image of an average guy who cannot stand the injustice of the world. To participate in the project, Michael canceled a family vacation and later called this role his favorite. Then, the actor added several roles to his filmography in the film's Disclosure with a payout of $12 million and American President. While working on the latter, Douglas discovered a distant relationship to U.S. President Richard Nixon and both Bush, and the payout amounted to $15 million. His intuition for hits didn't let the actor and producer down. Each of his next projects was a great success. For example, the adventure film The Ghost and the Darkness and the thrillers A Perfect Murder and The Game, for each of which Michael received $20 million. Oh, no, you've got to be kidding. What is happening? This is what I was trying to explain to you. This is a, uh, a game. Meanwhile, big changes were taking place in his personal life. Since the mid-90s, their marriage with Deandra was a conformity, and they just couldn't agree on the terms of the divorce. Even the marriage contract didn't make the task easier because Deandra wanted to increase the amount of compensation and Michael wanted to reduce it. At the same time, he was invested in a new relationship. In 1998, at the screening of The Mask of Zorro, he saw Catherine Zeta-Jones and was so fascinated by her that he immediately declared his desire to become the father of her children. Later, the actress would admit that she immediately fell in love with him but didn't want to have an affair with the taken man. However, six months after they met, they would spend hours on the phone talking about everything in the world. After that, the relationship developed rapidly. On New Year's Eve of 1999, Catherine was already pregnant and Michael offered his beloved a long-prepared ring with a 10-carat diamond surrounded by 28 smaller stones. Its cost is estimated from one to two million dollars. The actor's first wife then, without sarcasm, told reporters that he would have to change his religion to one where polygamy is allowed. But Douglas was already ready to agree to all DeAndre's conditions. So in 2000, he paid her $45 million and left her a mansion in Beverly Hills. 
as well as half of the estate in Majorca. By the way, Michael tried several times to find a buyer for his luxury property, but since the ex-wife remained the co-owner, he took it off the market. In August of the same year, Catherine gave birth to their first child, Dylan Michael, and in November, they had a gorgeous wedding of the year, which cost the actor $2 million. However, $1 million was covered because the magazine OK paid for an exclusive photos from the magnificent celebration. Interestingly, Michael and Catherine were born on the same day with a difference of 25 years. Personal affairs didn't prevent Douglas from actively acting and producing. So, in the same year 2000, he presented the movie Wonder Boys and together with his young wife appeared in the thriller Traffic. These two projects brought our hero 15 million. This was followed by the films One Night at Nicole's, Don't Say a Word, The In-Laws, and It Runs in the Family. The latter involved representatives of three generations of the Douglas family, Kirk and Diana, their son Michael and grandson Cameron. In 2003, the family of Michael and Catherine welcomed their daughter, Caracetta. After her birth, the celebrities moved to Bermuda, where our hero's mother is from. For more than 10 years, the couple lived in a quiet life, leaving only for filming, and the children didn't even know what their parents were doing. Their daughter recalled that as a child, she was sure that the main occupation of her dad's life was to bake pancakes for breakfast and please mom. The couple still owns this cozy nest, although they tried to sell it in 2019 for $10.6 million, but changed their minds. After a short break in his creative activity, Douglas returned to the screens in 2006 with the films The Sentinel, You, Me and Dupree, and a year later presented the comedy drama King of California. Then came the movies Ghosts of Girlfriends Past, Beyond a Reasonable Doubt, Solitary Man, and the continuation of the 1987 drama Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps. You're the ninja generation. No income. No job, no assets. You got a lot to look forward to. <laughs> a busy period in his career again coincided with the vessitudes of private life. His eldest son Cameron was a drug addict, and our hero had to forbid him to approach his family. In 2009, Cameron was accused of smuggling, which led him behind bars. By the way, Michael himself also suffered from addiction and in the 90s received treatment in a rehab clinic. His son also managed to get over a dangerous addiction, and Catherine Zeta-Jones at that difficult time became a real support for the family. But soon, another misfortune struck them. In 2010, Michael was diagnosed with laryngeal cancer. Catherine did everything to help her husband heal, but soon she couldn't stand the stress, and she started showing signs of bipolar disorder. Her periods of incredible activity were replaced by the deepest depression, and Michael didn't take his wife's problems seriously at all. These events almost put an end to their union, and they seriously talked about divorce, but still managed to make up. In 2012 to 2014, such films as Haywire and So It Goes, Beyond the Reach, and the biographical drama Behind the Candelabra were released. In the latter, the actor played the legend of American show business pianist and entertainer Liberace. And this role became a real gift for him after his illness. He trained for a long time, recreating the voice of his character and studied his piano playing technique. Also during this period, the actor starred in the comedy drama Last Vegas, along with Robert De Niro and Morgan Freeman. It's just winding up a little too fast, and I'm feeling old and alone. In 2015, Michael joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe playing the role of Hank Pym in the movie Ant-Man. He appeared in the same image in other projects, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Endgame, and the animated series What If. In addition, during the period, the actor starred in the action movie Unlocked, the thriller Animal World, took part in the voiceover of the children's series Green Eggs and Ham, and presented the series The Kominsky Method. For this comedic role, which is rare for him, Douglas received another Golden Globe. Why? It is fine. Which is what I said. No, no, you said it with an attitude, and you said, fine. Forgive me. Fine. Jesus, let's just order. Fine. In addition, our hero worked as a producer on the prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, the series rashed about a psychiatric hospital nurse. At the end of 2018, Michael Douglas's star was unveiled on the Hollywood Walk, dedicated to the 50th anniversary of his career. The actor admits that only work helps him keep in shape and to be fit, and he has a lot of projects. 
In February 2023, the premiere of the fantastic action movie Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania took place, where Douglas again played Hank Pym. The filming of the series Franklin about American President Benjamin Franklin has already begun and work is underway on a historical series about the relationship between two other presidents, Reagan and Gorbachev. Neither age nor illness affected Douglas's intelligence, and he was still surprising others with his ability to instantly remember the names of people he sees for the first time, and to notice the slightest nuances that distinguish the manner of the interlocutor's behavior. He loves golf and Formula One, and also does a lot of charity work. As the UN peace envoy, he is on a mission to draw the world's attention to nuclear disarmament and the protection of human rights. Philanthropy Douglas's family affair through the registered fund, they send money to various organizations. The entire inheritance from Kirk Douglas of $61 million was also sent to a charity, especially since Michael's fortune greatly exceeds his father's capital. It is estimated at $350 million earned as an actor and producer. In addition, Douglas invests. However, after the 2008 crisis, when he lost about 35-40% to 40 of his fortune, Michael became more conservative in investments. Douglas owns a valuable real estate portfolio with assets all over the world, which he gradually sells for his own benefit. He owned a plot of land with an area of more than 12 acres in Westchester County, New York, which he bought in 2015 for $11.3 million and sold in 2019 for $20.5 million. Around the same time, he and Catherine paid only $4.5 million for a house in the wealthy suburb of Irvington in New York State. The three-story Georgian mansion has eight bedrooms, 12 bathrooms, several living rooms and dining rooms, an indoor swimming pool, and a picturesque view of the Hudson River. Douglas and his wife also own a large apartment in New York City overlooking Central Park. The 15-room penthouse includes a master bedroom and a cozy library. In 2021, the property was put up for sale, but apparently hasn't found its buyer yet. The actor can rarely be seen in commercial advertising. The exception is the German electronic stock trading company Comdirect. But the most interesting one is the 60-second video for the FBI, in which Michael appeared as his character from Wall Street. It is known that Douglas owns cars of different brands and times, from vintage to modern, in particular the Mercedes-Benz Army-type car and the Toyota Prius. Now, the Douglas acting dynasty is continued by Michael's eldest son, Cameron. But so far, his films haven't enjoyed great success. And which movie with this actor do you like the most? Okay. 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 If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.